Was the visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus and Joseph and Mary kind of a baby shower? Come and let us explore together how that symbol of welcome is still important in our lives today. Let us worship together. Welcome to worship here at Round Hill Community Church. My name is Shannon White. I'm the pastor for spiritual development here at Round Hill. We welcome you to this online service for December 31st, 2023, as we bring out the old year and bring in the new one. And we're also celebrating Epiphany on this day. So if you are online and you would like to receive one of our star words, which is a tradition that has been through many different churches over time, uh, where there is a star, a word that is given in honor of the stars that the Magi followed, um, that kind of leads you through the following year, the coming year, please let us know at the church office and we'll send you one of the star words. So let us know. And please refer to our website for all of the upcoming events here at Round Hill Community Church. We're so glad you're with us. Let us worship together. Let us pray. God with us, kindle your spark within that together we may shine forth your light. We might banish the shadows of this world. We might be the continuation of the Christmas miracle. Emmanuel is in this world, God with us, now and forevermore. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our scripture passage this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. It's the story of the visit of the Magi. Listen now with a, perhaps a desire for a new understanding. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who's been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, 
for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and bring him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down to pay him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned, been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many people have a tradition of welcoming newcomers into town. It's quite wonderful, isn't it? Perhaps that tradition was built upon the genius idea of the welcome wagon, which was founded in 1928 by an insightful marketing man in Memphis, Tennessee, Thomas Briggs. Mr. Briggs was inspired by stories of early Conestoga welcome wagons that would meet and greet westward travelers, providing them with fresh food and water for the journey. He created Welcome Wagon to embody the same spirit of hospitality and welcome. He hired hostesses, women who were friendly and knowledgeable about their neighborhood, to personally deliver baskets of gifts supplied by local businesses to new homeowners. Over a cup of coffee, hostesses would tell the new home buyers about local civic and cultural activities in the community while handing out gifts and coupons from local businesses. This hostess network expanded across the country until aside from Briggs and just a, a handful of males, Welcome Wagon became the first, one of the first all woman companies in the United States. Many societies have a tradition of welcoming babies as well. We do it through baby showers. Mothers and modern fathers are given gifts and from people who want to let the little newborn baby and give them a royal welcome. They want to ease the life of the parents by providing some, some of the things which will be used in the daily life of the baby. Some gifts may be of sentimental value to be treasured for a lifetime. All of them are designed to shout out, welcome, we're so glad you were born. And in our case, our gospel text case, we're glad you're here. Our story this morning tells of one very unusual baby shower. <laughs> the Christ child was visited by royalty. They traveled many, many miles to welcome this child, but the gifts presented were not necessarily to be used immediately. They were, however, symbols of welcome, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These valuable items were standard gifts to honor a king or deity in the ancient world. Gold as a precious metal, frankincense as perfume or incense, in Jesus' case, some interpret this as the foreshadowing of his death in the future. Not a great baby shower gift. <laughs> and myrrh as anointing oil. In Jesus' case, meant to represent his priestly role. In fact, these same three items were apparently among the gifts recorded in ancient inscriptions that King, King Seleucus II, Callinicus, offered to the god Apollo at the temple in Miletus at two, in 243 BCE. Now, although Matthew's gospel does not include the names or number of the Magi, we don't know that there were three, many believe that the number of the gifts is what led to the tradition of the three wise ones. 
Every baby needs to know he or she is welcome. That the world would be a different place without him in it. And they need to know consistently until he or she believe it for themselves. But such is not the reality for so many of us who are raised by people with wounds themselves, who in turn were raised by people with their own wounds. That is the reality of many people who were born in the baby boom generation. Famous author Anne Lamott, one of my favorites, describes it so well in her book, Small Victories. She says this, the whole game in the 50s and 60s was for no one to know who you really were. We children were witness to the pretense of how our parents wanted the world to see them. We helped them maintain this image because if anyone outside the family could see who they really were deep down, the whole system, the ship of the family, might sink. We held our breath to give the ship buoyancy. We were their little air tanks. Wow. Perhaps we have grown, times have changed. We live in a time where there is curiosity over who our children will be and how we, as a society, might help them find a place for their unique gifts in the world. So a question might be on this day, how do we provide a space for welcome to be honored in this day and age? For space to allow us to all be curious and to imagine when all will see and hear, when all we see and hear is accusation, defensiveness, hatred, falsities, and witness violence, which makes us all fear one another. Does the coming of Emmanuel, God with us, make any difference? How might the coming of the Prince of Peace, the indwelling of the love of God, help us to pause and allow space for us to dream and consider how we might be participants in the reign of God and be bearers of the light that shines and the darkness did not overcome it? How might we practice radical hospitality to those whom we know and don't know yet? And as we look to close out the books for 2023 and open to 2024, how might the Christmas message of welcome keep our hearts open to creating the reign of God right here on earth? German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, you've surely heard of him, who also taught here in the US at Union Theological Seminary in New York City, later returned to his homeland during World War II and died in a concentration camp, had this idea of the attitude which leads to welcome nice, nicely. Who among us, he says, will celebrate Christmas correctly? Whoever finally lays down all power, all honor, all reputation, all vanity, all arrogance, all individualism beside the manger, Whoever main, remains lowly and lets God alone be high. Whoever looks at the child in the manger and sees the glory of God precisely in his lowliness." End quote. Over the years, I've become better at welcoming people into my home, particularly if I know they're coming. I've stretched myself to do so by working on the idea of letting people see me just as I am now, not how I want them to see me. It's by being vulnerable. What does a person who knows that they are welcomed by God and others look like? And what do they do to show that? Perhaps vulnerability gives us an idea. While welcome and hospitality may be traits which society may attribute to one gender or another, a perfect example between men came in a book which my mother, who's now deceased, gave to my daughter, Peyton, at Christmas several years back, called I'm Proud of You, 
My Friendship with Fred Rogers. And it's by Tim Madigan. Fred Rogers, you may remember, was more commonly known for his children's TV show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He was a Presbyterian minister and took his role as mentor and educator of children very seriously. This book is about the impact Rogers had on the life of Madigan, a newspaper journalist. The two formed a deep relationship and friendship after writing Madigan wrote a profile on him. The relationship was one of profound welcome the sort of welcome that says the sort of divine thing that God said to Jesus at his baptism. You are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. He writes, Fred wanted to know the truth of your life, the nature of your insides, and had enough of his own spirit to embrace without judgment whatever the truth might be, even mine. One email Madigan received after telling Rogers that he was in the middle of a profound depression which was threatening his 13-year marriage said, your wounded heart is a beautiful heart. In fact, it probably has allowed you to understand the hearts of all others who are wounded and whose isn't in some way. Some are just a little more obvious than others. Please know that I think of you and pray for you every day. Yes, every day. You've touched a very deep part of my being too, you know. I'm grateful to God for you." End quote. And another few days later, he said, he got this email from Fred. Even if you can't believe in your own goodness from time to time, please know that I always do. You are a superb person. I feel constantly blessed to call you my Anamkara, Gaelic for spiritual friend. Madigan wrote that having experienced such profound welcome transformed him and saved his marriage. In a sense, it brought him back to life. We can do the same for others when we welcome others out of our own sense of being welcomed by God, lives are transformed and wounds are disrupted. To believe that we are worthy not only of being here on the planet, but we have a purpose in God's world to love and be loved and to make a difference in others' lives is a gift. Even if you have only a smidgen of that sense of welcome, a slight glimmer of the welcome and value you have in God's eye, you can reflect that to others. So welcome to the world, baby Jesus. We're glad you came. Welcome. Welcome to each other. Welcome to you on this day. We're so glad you came. Alleluia. Amen. Let us bring our gifts to God so that the reign of Christ may be fully realized in our world.
For our prayer this morning, I thought we would invite in the new year with a candle lighting ceremony and dedicate each candle to a particular prayer. So let us pray together. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We light this first candle, remembering the children who were a part of our church and a part of our lives this past year. This light beams so that all young people may be able to grow up receiving affection and protection. We light this second candle remembering all of those who have experienced grief and loss in our congregation and in our families. The death of a loved one, the ending of a significant relationship, the loss of employment. This light beams for their continuing comfort and support. We light this third candle, remembering all of those who have shared in ministry in this place, Round Hill Community Church, both now and in the past. Ministers, lay people, organists, and singers, all those who offered pastoral care or reminded us of our wider community. Those who visited hospitals, nursing homes, cooked meals, or offered transport, or a loving ear of support. This light beams with the compassion of the Christ child in our midst. We light this fourth candle remembering all of those who have visited this place in recent times and decided to call this place home. This light beams in order that we may continue to explore and enjoy everything we have received as a gift. We light this fifth candle, mindful of those who have called us to risk the way of Christ to create inclusive and safe, open and honest communities for all as well as sustainability. This light beams as a symbol of hope for the world to see. We light this sixth candle for our hopes of peace in the world not as a silencing of voices, but as peace which bears one another's burdens across lines which humans have drawn. This light beams on the pathways we have welcomed and where we didn't want to go. It will continue to shine for each and every one of us on the new pathways we will tread. Gracious and loving God, may we be a light, part of the light that is shed in the world. And may we take the peace of Christ with us now and always. Let us pray together the prayer of Round Hill Community Church. Our Heavenly Father, shed forth thy blessed spirit upon all our lives. Make each one of us an instrument in thy hands for good. Purify our hearts, strengthen our minds and bodies, fill us with Christian love. Let no pride, no self-conceit, no rivalry, no ill will ever spring up among us. Make us earnest and true, wise and prudent, giving no just cause for offense. And may thy holy peace rest upon us this day and every day throughout the coming week sweetening our trials, cheering us in our work, and keeping us faithful to the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
go forth from this place out of 2023 and into 2024, bringing welcome and the light of the world into the world. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. As you carry the spirit of this worship experience with you, there are a few things that you can do that would make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, and click the notification bell and select all. Thank you.